let's consider pretty much the most stock standard uh, exponential function you can have. Y equals two to the X. Okay, I've just chosen two because it's an easy number to wrap your head around. Y equals two to the X as an exponential function. Where is it going to begin? If I said X equals zero, X equals zero along the Y axis. What value are you going to get for y? One. You're just going to get one. Your index laws tell you that. So go ahead and along on here, pop in one. Now the whole point of the exponential function is, if the base is two, then every time you progress over one unit, you're going to double, aren't you? Right. So if I go over to x equals one, then y is going to be equal to two. And very rapidly, if I go over to x equals 2, you start to run out of space, don't you? Because here's uh, 1, 2. In fact, I'll even write that in. 2, for the x coordinate, is going to come up to 4 for the y coordinate. So, I don't have space for the next one. Uh, 3, comma 8. It's already off my graph. So that's what's happening to the right. What's happening to the left? If I put in negative values for x, what's happening to 2 to the x? Yeah, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller the further we go over here. For instance, if I have x equals 1 and 2 already plotted on there, well, it makes sense to put x equals negative 1 and negative 2 on there. If you think about these guys, well, we know what negative indices do when you put them up in there. 2 to the power of negative 1, of course, is a half. So let's do our best here. That's about halfway down, isn't it? And of course, if we go over another step, 2 to the power of negative 2, you're going to be at great. So just as we went from left to right, and these distances vertically doubled, and they got higher and higher and higher, Going from right to left, the distances are halving. Halving and halving and halving and halving and halving. Which is why, no matter how far you go, you'll never actually touch this x-axis. Why not? Because kind of a half to zero. Yeah, no matter how many times you halve, right? Uh, you'll never actually get to zero. You'll just get very, very small numbers. Okay? So now we try our best to join up the dots. What you want to make sure is that as you get closer and closer and closer, you're, whoops, sorry, you're going to approach the x-axis, but never actually collide with it. So that makes y equals zero the equation of our asymptote, and it's important that you label that on there. Okay, go ahead, join the dots, and let's see what kind of picture we get. Okay, now just a quick note. Um, well, I'm reasonably happy with that. I've done, I've done better. I didn't quite get every single one of the points. But this is probably fine. Um, on an exponential graph like this, you are expected to have a reasonably accurate scale, especially when either you're drawing on grid paper or if grid paper is supplied to you. So sometimes you get on, a, on an exam, they're like, separate this page out and draw a graph on it. If they give you grid paper, that means they're expecting these distances to be consistent. And they're expecting these distances here to be what they're supposed to be on this graph. So you really have to have some, some points plotted on there. Okay. All right, so let's label this guy y equals 2 to the x. Now, the heading is graphs of logarithmic functions. And I tacked on exponential there because the best way to understand log functions is to think of them in terms of exponential functions. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your page. Unfortunately, I cannot do this to the whiteboard. I want you to take your page. And then I want you to rotate it 45 degrees anti-clockwise. 45 degrees anti-clockwise. So now your um, axis should be pointing like this, right? Like in an X rather than a T, okay? Then with your graph in that orientation on the, on the page, right, on the table, I want you to now draw in, in a different color, if you've got it, the line Y equals X. Can you draw that for me? Okay, now again, keeping your page the way it is, I wish I could just t turn this over, okay? Uh, keeping your page the way it is, I want you to reflect the y equals two to the x line, reflect it across 
this y equals x line that we've just drawn. If you've got like a free page there, what you can literally do is you can actually fold your page along this line. And then if you press hard enough on the opposite side of the page, you're going to get an impression that's going to go over here, that's going to the reflection across y equals x. Okay. Then you're going to get a new graph. Once you've got that new graph, put your pen down and look up so I know you're ready. Okay, how'd you go? Does it look reasonable? You can turn it back right the correct way now. What you should have is, and you can you can rotate your head to see mine, ish. Okay, what you have created is the y equals log base two of x line. Okay, or the graph, I should say. So you've got this pair of functions that are related in this symmetrical way. It's not odd, odd symmetry, it's not even symmetry, it's something else. You'd say it's a reflection, my scale's a bit off, but you get the right idea. It's a reflection across the y equals x line. One of the ways you can know that this is what you created is, take this equation here, y equals, wrong color, log base 2 of x. That is currently a log equation. How would you rewrite it? 2 to the y. If you were to rewrite it as an exponential equation with no log terms, x is going to be the subject, and it's going to be 2 to the power of y. So you see that the relationship between this and our original is you've taken the inputs and outputs, the x's and the y's in function notation, and you have swapped them, right? Which is why everything that was horizontal, like this asymptote, for example, is now vertical. You see that? We've got our new asymptote here at x equals 0. And you're getting this behavior over here. Instead of getting steeper and steeper and steeper, over here you're getting shallower and shallower and shallower <laughs> forever. Does that make sense? So the log function grows, but it grows really, really slowly. There's no asymptote up here that makes it stop. It will grow on forever, just it takes a really long time. Uh, so there's your graph. Okay. Make sure you've got your um, asymptote there and make sure it's labeled. That's really important. Make sure just like you went through y equals 1, you're going to go through x equals 1. Okay. Now, this log graph is going to be the subject of today. I'm going to give you a series of graphs that are related to the transformations we had a look at, at the end of last week. You can shift things around, you can stretch, and you can also do all kinds of interesting things if you're willing to muck around with this. Okay. So for each of these, uh, write this little instruction underneath this um, underneath this set of axes for me. Okay. So graph the following and include there are going to be three things that I'm looking for for each of these graphs. Okay. For starters, when you graph anything, when you graph anything at all, what's like the most basic pieces of information you put on there? Okay, you've got intercepts, right? So x or y I should say and or y intercepts. I'm just going to assume you have axes on there. Now when I'm actually talking about the graph <laughs> itself, you're going to need intercepts. And what other kinds of things? Have a look at the... Asymptotes. Yeah, okay, so there's an asymptote. You're expecting an asymptote. Did you get it? Okay. Now, one thing that's a bit peculiar to um, this graph here is that I'd like you to... <laughs> <laughs> that was probably louder than you intended. I guess I'm going to have to edit that out. That's okay. Shh. Stay with me. <clears throat> For each of these graphs that we've just done, do you notice the way we started was we put a laborious amount of actual plotted points on here. I do not expect you to do that for the next few that I'm going to ask you to draw. However, for that reason, I want you to notice that this graph here that I'm about to draw, this graph here could be almost any exponential graph, right? 
because almost all of them pass through that point. And in the same way, this could be almost any log graph because they all pass through this point. So you need to supply a bit more information to tell me, is this log base 2 of x or is it log base 3 of x or log base 100 of x? So what are you going to need in addition to these things? You're going to need to have some point for scale, some coordinate, some locking point, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So I'm going to call it a point for scale. Okay. The only thing I'll add is it's only unnecessary. The only time you don't need a point for scale is if you happen to intersect with both axes. If you intersect with both, then you can know, oh, I can here and here, that's got my scale both horizontally and vertically. But most of them will not, like the ones that we've drawn here. So you'll need that. So I'll say unnecessary if both axes are intersecting. 